Good afternoon uh, to our participants on Facebook Live. Um, this is Eladio Pereira. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at the Mariposa Community Health Center. And this is our Facebook Live as part of We Love Nogales. Uh, we've done a series of this to link and educate our community about COVID-19, share what we know, and also share some of the strategies that uh, are known to work uh, to help us uh, stay safe. That's, that's, that's our main goal. Uh, I want to thank uh, our team to make this possible. Uh, of course, Edgardo, uh, our Mariposa Community Health Center family, and all of you for, um, for accessing our, our site, listening to what we have to share with you. Uh, and I think more importantly, to share this with family and friends. Uh, as I've said before, this is a disease of all of us. And, and as such, we need to take um, the precautions uh, that are known to work. Um, be before I begin, I, I want to make a brief comment about our, our colleagues and, and healthcare workers who are working in hospitals across the nation uh, to manage uh, a very, very difficult situation uh, in terms of COVID-19 patients. This is a new illness. We're learning things every day. And our, our, our doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and really everyone working under tough circumstances and our, our, our support to them. And, and we're just so grateful for what you do. And let's not forget uh, about those individuals who who also are keeping us safe. Um, I also want to give credit to our colleagues at the Santa Cruz County Health Department, Pima County Health Department, Maricopa County Health Department, of course, the Center for Disease Control Prevention. Those are main sources of information that we do. Today, we have uh, two esteemed colleagues uh, to share uh, our information. Uh, I'm very honored to have Dr. Bob England uh, with us today over the phone, Dr. England, I've known for a long time. Uh, at the moment, he's director of the Pima County Health Department. We're very fortunate to have you with us, uh, Bob, today. And uh, and again, welcome. Hey, thanks a lot. It's good to be here. Thank you. And also, we have Dr. Bill Williams, who is our uh, department chair at Mariposa, to help us uh, with some of the comments. Uh, welcome, Phil. Thank you so much, Dr. Pereira. And then to my left, I have uh, Mike Castillo, our Senior Director of Pharmacy. Mike has worked really hard to make medications accessible to our patients so that they're not in contact with, with us. And so, Mike, welcome to, Thank uh, you, Dr. P. to our, our, our session. Um, I know Dr. England is very, very busy, so I, I'm, I'm going to talk to him for a couple of moments first and and uh, certainly we, we appreciate his time I'll just make a brief a brief comment about the current situation and and dr. England and I spoke about this yesterday and and he made a good point uh, uh, you know I talk about number of cases in Arizona as of this morning there were about 1495 uh, out of those uh, 1495 in, in Pima County I'm sorry in, in Maricopa County and then uh, Pima 415 and Santa Cruz 5. But Dr. England made a good point is that, you know, we just don't know. At the moment, due to the limited testing that we have, we're not able to diagnose patients who have no symptoms. Uh, with the testing that we have available, we follow the guidelines of, of the Arizona State Lab. And I'll go over that in just a moment. But I think Bob made a really good point. Uh, that we we just don't know, and so, Bob, you want to comment about that? You made a really good yeah, comment. A, a, absolutely. In, in normal circumstances, we wanted would have wanted as many people tested as possible. Um, everybody knows about the shortage of testing kits and and the ability for labs to test. So we've been flying blind for quite a while now. We really think that. Based on the number of people we suspect have really mild disease or maybe asymptomatic, and because of the vast majority of people physicians wanted to test, they simply couldn't because the supplies weren't there, we really think there's way more people infected than these counts um, would indicate. Probably. 
probably 50 times as many and 100 times as many people would not surprise me. Um, and that's important to keep in mind. If you think for a moment that there are only five people in Santa Cruz County who have this, and so you're unlikely to get exposed, think again. Um, it's pretty much all over the place at this point in time, which, mean, which means we have to take it really seriously, the suggestions that you've heard a million times about uh, washing your hands, keeping your hands away from your face, on and on. That, that's in especially staying home if you're sick. That's really, really important. And, you know, this, this is a disease that is best managed non-pharmaceutically. Um, I know we talk about hydroxychloroquine and other drugs. I'll touch on that later, but it's all about prevention, and 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 it's it's really important to to go over that one more time. So, Bob, I'm going to ask you uh, review for us uh, the things that we talk about for a long time, but it doesn't hurt to review that in detail. Let's review the things that we need to be doing every day. In fact, I brought in our table here, Bob. You don't see that because you're in the phone, but we have wipes. We have hand sanitizer. We're wearing a surgical mask because we're a healthcare awesome. institution and all of that. Can, can you review with us what you recommend at Pima County and, and all over the, the country about effective prevention strategies, which is what we're trying to emphasize? Can, can you spend some time on that? You, you bet. Sure. So um, there's, there are the things we've been saying from the very beginning, which sound really trite, but really can make a difference. Wash your hands. Do it well. Um, if you can't wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. Keep your hands away from your face. Um, help other people by coughing into your into the crook of your elbow, into your sleeve, or if you've got one available, into a tissue and throw it away. And wash your hands. Um, the most important probably is stay home if you're sick. But we now know that even uh, people who are asymptomatic can at least occasionally transmit um, the virus. So you've noticed in the last few days, the CDC put out the recommendation um, to wear a cloth mask. Just make your own, like a bandana even. Something to cover your um, face up if you have to be indoors around other people. Um, and, you know, we have, as a state, as a society, put all sorts of restrictions on onto ourselves now. Um, closed schools, closed all sorts of businesses down. We're paying a horrific economic cost. Um, there was a time for debate about whether those kind of measures were necessary, but that time is over because the decisions have been made. So if we're paying that much of a cost that I'm sure you all are feeling down there in Nogales, um, then we really, really have to get as much benefit out of that as we possibly can. Let's not blow it. We're paying the price Let's follow not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of those orders, which is to keep apart um, as much as possible so we can slow this thing down. If we slow it down, we're, we're, going, we're, we're not going to keep people from getting sick forever, but we'll slow it down enough that the health care system can take care of those of us who are the sickest that it won't get overwhelmed, and we can buy time to learn more about what kinds of treatments might actually work down the road. So we're in this all the way, and we have to, you know, don't cheat. Don't throw a party. Don't uh, try to um, socialize um, with folks in a way that gets you closer than six feet of your friends. Uh, just... Do your best to do right by the rest of the community, and and we'll all get through this together. Well said. Well said. Great, great, great recommendations. And I think that's more important as we we um, reach this coming weekend, which is Easter weekend. And and I know I have spoken with some of our staff about really preventing large social gatherings. Um, 
exactly for that reason, is to reduce contact between people. Uh, nowadays, uh, we could have a perfectly healthy individual who has coronavirus, we don't know, and he or she can transmit it to other, and the other person could get sick. So the, the epidemiology is, is really important. So I, I think that's, 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 that's essential. Bob, the, I, I read some, some things this morning that we may be seeing, um, starting to see some of the effects of social distancing. Um, maybe California, a uh, number of cases is down a little bit. They implemented that some time ago, Governor Newsom. What, what, what do you hear out there in terms of, are, are we seeing some, some benefits of social distancing? What, what's your thought on that? Yeah, yeah, perhaps, but this is going to be a long slog. Okay. It really is. This is not going to be over in a couple weeks or a few weeks. Yeah. Um, the, the point is, the only things that are going to turn this curve around for good are two things. One, maybe we get really lucky and the virus behaves seasonally and with the hot summer months it the transmission gets much harder that would be a beautiful thing and i'll take it if we can get it but we can't count on it the only other way to turn an epidemic curve around is after enough people have already gotten sick that you build herd immunity you know that same term we use all the time with vaccines yeah. Um, it applies to natural disease, too. Yeah. But in order with a disease that's as infectious as this, to get enough people to build herd immunity, you're talking about way over half of people needing to be infected. So that's going to be a long time down the road. Yeah. Um, and I really, I think our best bet is keep doing what we're doing, slow this down, buy some time for the researchers, to be able to do things that they never could have done as quickly a decade or two ago and and hopefully we'll we'll get ourselves out of this if 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 not maybe it'll be seasonal and that'll be what um saves us at least for this summer absolutely absolutely and that that's what we hope to convey in this session as, as we move to the next phase is to really emphasize those strategies that are a little foreign to us uh, because we want to be in groups, we want to socialize, but this is a different ball game. We've never been here before, at least in my lifetime. And so th that's exactly what we need to do. And, and this is a disease that can affect all of us and it can spread very, very quickly. But, but, we, but we think we, we know how to manage it and, and prevent it, and the key is to reduce the spread. Right, Bob? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Just slow slow it down as much as we can for now. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And, you know, w w uh, 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 one of the things that the healthcare institutions are doing, obviously this is a population problem, but I think we in healthcare have taken actions. We, we're doing things differently. Um, we, we want to separate the sick from the healthy, and I'm going to ask Dr. Williams briefly, uh, Dr. Williams, and, and then I'm going to ask uh, Mike uh, about some of the things that, that uh, I think are being done, not just at Mariposa, but across the country. And, and Bob, you've probably seen this in Tucson too, uh, about implementation of telemedicine, uh, about doing some work outside at uh, Mariposa. We put together about 20 tents to see people outside, screen them, take temperatures, uh, manage the respiratory problems, do all the testing outside. But Dr. Williams, can you come in briefly on some of the things that that you know that health institutions have done to to keep all of us healthy and and reduce the spread uh, amongst all of us? You you want to comment on, on that, the telemedicine and a few other things? Sure. Thank you, Dr. B. You know, one of the most exciting things that's occurring uh, in Santa Cruz County here at Mariposa, and really, just like Dr. B said, around the country, is telemedicine. Um, so for people that aren't familiar with it, basically telemedicine is a way that you can still connect with your doctor. You can still talk to him. You can still try to see them through video and not be physically present. So you can be, you know, 50 miles away, and yet you can still talk to your doctor. 
because we're aware that um, our patients are still going to get sick. They're still going to have questions. They're still going to have concerns. They still need medication refills. And uh, you need a way to contact with your doctor. So um, in Mariposa, uh, we currently have our telemedicine uh, program is, 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 is in full effect. So all you do is that you can call the clinic and say that you'd like a telemedicine appointment with whoever your provider is. Um, and then they will uh, schedule you a time just like for a normal appointment. So um, they'll call you at that time, and then um, they'll do the consult as much as you can, either via phone or, 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 or time to video. Um, there may be times where uh, that's not enough, and that the provider may say, hey, I really need to listen to your heart or listen to your lungs. And in those cases, they may have you come in for an appointment. But the studies show that a large majority of, of, of our consult visits can be done uh, remotely, just because for us in medicine, history is really key. So as long as the the patient or the family can provide a really good history, a lot of times we can we can provide recommendations and figure out um, um, what, what's going on and what the best next step is. Okay. Um, just like Dr. P mentioned, we also have a sense outside of Mariposa. So if you are sick, we're currently doing your exam um, outside. That way, if you're coming in for a physical appointment, um, you uh, you won't necessarily be around patients that, that have, to have uh, at least obvious or active on the um, yeah. So that, that's another option for all of our patients. Absolutely, absolutely. And and Bob and Dr. Uh, uh, and Phil, um, uh, I want to touch a little bit on pharmacy um, because uh, uh, this is something really, really important. Our pharmacy has done an outstanding job, too, of creating essentially a new system in three weeks to, to deliver medications safely. So I'm going to let our Senior Director of Pharmacy, Mike Castillo, and then... And then I, I want to go back to testing, uh, and then we'll answer some questions. I want to keep uh, uh, the, the the session to a reasonable time. I know you, you you're very busy, so uh, Mike, you want to come in briefly on what we're doing at the pharmacy to make medications accessible to our patients and reducing risk to all of us? Yes, thank you, Dr. P. <clears throat> Initially, we started out evaluating what would be the best options for mitigating risk and, and helping um, keep our patients from being too close to each other, uh, social distancing. Uh, we initially uh, went along with what the rest of the clinic was doing with uh, screening patients out front. If the patients were uh, showing any signs or symptoms of, of illness, fever, cough, any of those things, uh, we uh, kept them outside and we brought the prescriptions outside to them. Uh, any person that uh, didn't have any symptoms, we would allow them in the pharmacy and we would um, yeah, and we would allow them um, to come in and, and pick up their prescriptions. Um, as we went along, we also started home delivery to our most vulnerable patients, those 60 years and older. Um, are immunocompromised and also any patients that were uh, pregnant and we delivered to their home. Uh, we subsequently expanded that to 55 and older and now at this time we're uh, willing to deliver anywhere in Nogales uh, area. Um, after implementing those things we decided that uh, to uh, improve our social distancing we started curbside service on Monday, yesterday, and we designated a parking area where patients just drive up to the uh, pharmacy and they call the pharmacy number, let us know who they are, and we uh, find their prescriptions. We run them out to uh, our people that are uh, posted right outside the pharmacy, and they run them over to the patient's uh, vehicle and deliver the, the medication there. Um, those employees that are running the medications to the cars are in full PPE. They've got masks. They've got uh, uh, eye um, protection. They've also got gowns, and also uh, they have their shoes covered. So they're in, in full PPE to protect them and the patient. Um, we realized that even when we had the pharmacy uh, uh, open to some patients that appeared healthy that that wasn't protecting our population enough uh, because of the possibility of asymptomatic carriers 
Uh, we felt that uh, it was best if every patient, if they're doing social distancing from home, they could also do social distancing when they went to the pharmacy by just staying in their car. So we just started that and there's a few bugs, we're working them out, um, you know, different things involved with payment and uh, cash and exchanging that type of thing. Uh, patients that don't have cars or don't have phones, we've examined those and, and come up with uh, workflows to address those issues as well. So overall, uh, I feel that uh, you know we've actually done a very good job in, in a very short time, and and uh, we've had support from very various different departments to allow us to pull this off. Because with our own pharmacy personnel, uh, we couldn't have done it on our own. So different departments. Uh, have pitched in and, and that's true all over Mariposa. Uh, we've got non-essential personnel and they've become essential personnel. Um, they've helped out in every single area from um, uh, patient visits to you know to running out prescriptions in the pharmacy so um, okay. that's pretty much what we've been up to. Very good, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think our pharmacy has done an, a, just an extraordinary job on, on making this happen. And um, I'm going to uh, move to uh, a different area of testing. Uh, Bob, you're, you're very familiar with testing, I'm sure. And we have been also uh, uh, involved with, with testing. And we, we'll, we'll finish this and then we'll answer a few questions. So, um, uh, we, we at Mariposa have been following the guidelines of the Arizona State Lab at the moment because of limited testing, and I'm sure this is happening in Tucson too. You know, we're yeah. not we're not testing people without symptoms. We just don't have enough tests, so we are following the guidelines, uh, and those are. And, and Dr. Williams uh, um, will comment on this as well. For the patients not in the hospital, we depend on symptoms, right? Those are fever, cough and shortness of breath. Um, and then if you have close contact with a confirmed COVID-19 patient, that's, that's an indication for testing. At the moment, we're using the, um, the nasopharyngeal swab that does a PCR, which is a DNA test. Uh, the FDA approved the antibody test last week and we're analyzing that. There are some issues with the test. It's available in 10 to 15 minutes, but we're gonna look at that as possible use. And then the second group in the non-hospitalized is those with symptoms, i.e. fever, cough, shortness of breath, and then being a member of a certain group. Uh, and that could be healthcare workers, it could be uh, uh, persons who work for critical infrastructure such as water, utilities, elect electricity, uh, nuclear reactors, all of that, or living in a congregate setting. And that includes long-term care facilities. And, and, and those are the ones who, who are testing. Uh, we're not able to test everyone. Bob, is, is that, uh, you see that being done in other places too, just like we're following Santa Cruz County, uh, depending, uh, yeah. being very careful about testing, Bob? Yeah, and that the only reason is because of the limiting testing supplies. We, right. we had to conserve them, and it's been very frustrating for us. It's been frustrating for providers and for patients. It's been um, uh, really difficult. Now, having said that, one of the things you'll notice is that it's the sickest people, generally, who are getting tested, people in the hospital, and that makes the disease look inherently worse than it probably is overall, on average. You're only testing people in the hospital, you're, it's going to look like the infection puts everybody in the hospital, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, of course, there's the other categories that you mentioned, people who are in settings where it would be just a disaster not to know that they were infected, like healthcare workers or somebody living in a shelter or a long-term care center, those kind of things. Um, by the way, we've had some just really bad outbreaks in long-term care centers already here, and um, that that's a population that really worries me. Um, the testing supply is getting better. Um, we've been saying that for a while, but it really looks like into this week or so, 
we're going to finally have some significant numbers of test kits that we can push out to our partners um, and try and expand it. And first, for our, our top of our list is long-term care facilities so that they can know what's going on inside their facilities and, and uh, try to control infections before they can spread around to, to other very vulnerable people. Right, right. Um, so it's coming. It's going to get better over time. The antibody um, uh, testing is is still iffy because we don't know. There isn't good data yet on whether there's cross-reactivity, uh, what the false positive rate or false negative rate is. It, that jury's still out on that. There's rapid PCR testing available. It's the same kind of testing you've been doing all along, only can be done quicker so that you can get a result in 15 minutes. That's going to help. Um, so things are looking up. We'll, we'll, we'll know more about what's going on in the, couple, in the coming weeks. Yeah. And uh, we received a letter from ADHS today emphasizing the concern about long-term care facilities. Uh, today, uh, you probably got yeah. that too, and and really, uh, some of the uh, PPE uh, is being sort of reallocated to the long-term care facilities. Rightfully so, they they've really been uh, uh, touched very very in a difficult way by this virus. So I, I heard that today. That came up today in a in an email from ADHS. Uh, is that yes. is, is that what you see there too? Yes. Yeah, and, we, and we're trying to, we, we've been prioritizing what little we could get our hands on. We've been prioritizing long-term care because um, they really, uh, you know, uh, healthcare workers in some of these settings are heroes. Yeah. Um, they've yeah. been doing the best they can with very little. They have been fantastic, and I cannot thank them enough for, for taking care of, of these really sick people. Sick, sick patients, uh, Dr. Williams. Before we go to questions, you 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 want to emphasize um, the the importance of of uh, what we're doing in terms of looking at at our protective equipment. Uh, we follow the guidelines. We look at this virtually every day, and and those guidelines change fairly fairly often. And I'm sure in Pima County the same thing. With uh, I, I get reports about uh, PPE or, or or protective equipment. You know, everyone is looking at proper use, um, using them using them in certain situations. I, I'm sure, Bob, you see that in all hospitals in Tucson. And and Dr. Williams, you want to come in briefly on how we look at those guidelines, how we implement them, and to really use the equipment well, because it's in, it's in short supply, and we don't want to uh, get to the point where we don't have anymore. So you you want to make a comment about that? Yep. Dr. Williams? I think we, we lost Dr. Williams. We lost Dr. Williams. That's people, people have been in, in all healthcare settings have been trying to conserve and doing things they never would have in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, and we need that to keep going. We're, yeah. We've been scrambling to get more. We've got people actually 3D printing uh, face shields for us. We've got people bringing in boxes of gloves and masks from their from their. Uh, um, uh, bathroom cabinets. We've got um, people hand making masks at home. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive what the community's trying to do. I've got we've got distilleries making hand sanitizer yeah. and surface disinfectant instead of instead of uh, the whiskey yeah. that they usually produce. <laughs> I, I know, I know. <laughs> amazing. So, for our audience, we lost Dr. Williams. We'll try to reach him. See where he's at. But uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. We got some questions that I'm gonna answer, Bob. I'm gonna do it in Spanish if you allow me. Uh, so we'll we'll do what we can, and I'll try to translate. Um, so the first question is, ¿Cómo podrá eh, decir podemos eh, prevenir? So how how do we prevent it? Lo podemos eh, eh, reducir el riesgo lavando las manos. 
y mantener una distancia de seis pies entre persona y, perso y persona. Eh, toser en el hombro o con un pañuelo en la boca. That's a way to prevent it. I'm going to go back and forth, Bob, here for a moment. Yeah, hey, no worries. I, I caught about a fourth of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, ¿sirve o no sirve la mascarilla o cubre bocas? ¿Y cuánto tiempo pueden durar? Does it work? The mask, the mask works. Uh, studies from Singapore early on show that the, that the masks do work. In fact, in South Korea, it's been, uh, uh, it's been uh, published that uh, they attribute the reducing cases by, by covering the mouth. And, and, and it looks like the masks actually protect more the other person than us. Uh, so. Exactly. That's, that's what I was going to jump in and say. Yeah. It, it, when you see somebody wearing one of those homemade cloth, uh, uh, cloth masks, yeah. thank them. Because they're doing it for you, not for themselves. That's exactly right. I want to make sure they knew that. And you mentioned the the cloth mat. That's usually out in the community when they may be close to other people. Uh, the surgical masks are reserved for healthcare workers at the moment. Uh, exactly. Hay alguna vacuna, tratamiento efectivo, any vaccine or effective treatment? Uh, so no vaccine yet. Uh, effective treatment not clear. Uh, a lot of a lot of studies been done on um, rancidivir, hydroxychloroquine, cytromycin, chloroquine. It's still uh, the jury's out. There have been some anecdotes that in some patients been effective, but we don't know that yet. We wait um, for Dr. Fauci and NIH to give us direction on that. I know it's been used. The the issue about hydroxychloroquine, by the way, is that. Uh, it's been reported that some patients who take it chronically for lupus, systemic lupus, and sometimes rheumatoid arthritis, they're having difficulty <laughs> getting them because other people are, are buying them to to use uh, for COVID, and uh, that that's a, that's an issue. We're going to create a shortage for people whose disease has been managed very well by hydroxychloroquine. You have you heard about that, Bob? Yes, and. Don't try it on your own. Right. One of the significant side effects of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, by the way, is an arrhythmia, arrhythmia yeah. cardiac arrhythmia. Absolutely. So, um, you, you, can, you can put yourself at serious jeopardy um, if you just uh, go to a pharmacy and buy it and try and, and use it yourself. Absolutely. It can cause something to prolong QT. It also ha can affect the retina. It can uh, affect, uh, it can add some pigment to the retina, high doses, that's been reported too. Uh, liquidos o geles antibacteria sirven. Gels antibacteria, yes, they do work. It's recommended, se recomienda usar jabón y agua primero um, por 20 segundos. Y si no están disponibles, usar uh, hand sanitizer. So the idea is open water 20 seconds or hand sanitizer. Um, then otras cuentas. Uh, si una persona se recuperó de COVID, puede donar plasma para que otras personas se curen. If someone is recovering from COVID-19, can she donate plasma to help others uh, who are uh, sick? That's been study. I know that uh, uh, people who are convalescing from this illness have had uh, uh, plasma removed and they're looking at this as a possible treatment essentially using the antibody or the immune globulin for treatment uh, the, the jury's out yet right Bob? Exactly and there's um, also studies going on going on creating monoclonal antibodies so they can make a lot of it instead of relying on uh, individuals who've recovered um, there, there's just the last time I looked at um uh, the list of clinical trials going on, there were nearly 300 in, in some state of progress around the world. Yep. Everyone's flat out trying to find something right now. Yeah, okay, excellent. ¿Qué procedimiento está tomando la clínica para recibir personas infectadas? What procedures is the clinic uh, doing to evaluate inf possible infected people? We have screening stations. Tenemos estaciones afuera. Las carpas para evaluar pacientes con síntomas y fiebre y tenemos un protocolo para, para examinarlos. So we have a procedure to scream outside, do temperatures, ask about fever, cough, travel history, of exposure to infected people. We do that in our, uh, in our tents. Um, 
So, uh, se están haciendo pruebas de COVID en Nogales. y yes, podemos hacer pruebas únicamente para pacientes con síntomas o algún otro historia. We're doing testing on, on, on uh, symptomatic patients and also uh, with some other factor, usually um, uh, close contact with a confirmed case or uh, participate in an occupation. Is there a prueba casera? Is there a home method to detect uh, COVID? The answer is not at the moment. Um, los animales son propensos al virus. Are animals uh, susceptible to the virus? So the recommendation is if you have an active, if you have active disease, you want to prevent exposure. We know that from SARS to MERS to COVID-19 or to uh, SARS-CoV-2, the, the transmission appears to be from animal to human. And so the idea CDC recommends if you have active disease to prevent exposure to animals. Bob, have you heard about that? Any, any, anything new on... Yeah, on... The, the only, and, it, and it's not great evidence yet, but I did see some evidence that looks like um, dogs are not susceptible, but cats may be okay. able to contract it. That there's no evidence at all that it can come from a cat to a person, though. Okay, so. all right. Uh, I, I don't know if you read this yesterday. I, I, heard, I read the, Bron the Bronx Zoo had a tiger with COVID-19 <clears throat> after he was exposed to an asymptomatic infected employee. So he, wa <laughs> he, was yeah. he was coughing and they tested him and he was positive. So it looks yeah. like a human to tiger happens. <laughs> At least we know yeah, that. And human to cat, apparently. Yes, absolutely. Uh, ¿Cuándo vamos a ver la curva del virus descender? We're going to see the curve flatten. We don't know. Uh, I think it's anyone's guess. It really depends on us. It all depends on us, right, Bob? I mean, if we do the things about social distancing, we'll see a flattening of the curve, right? That, that's exactly right. That, that's well said. And uh, please understand that because the curve was going up at first, we won't see that right away because there's going to be household transmission occur. We're going to see more cases for a while, and we won't see the evidence of this, what we're doing right now today, working probably for a, two or three weeks. But hopefully we'll see it then. Right. Fantastic. So I think we covered a lot today, uh, from testing to symptoms to epidemiology, social distancing, our pharmacy colleagues. It's been a great program. Bob, is there anything you want to share? Anything else you want to share with Santa Cruz County? You know, and we do this, by the way, you know, Pima is our neighboring county. So whatever happens here is going to happen in Pima and vice versa. That's the reason we yeah. wanted Dr. England here. So we're neighbors. And so yeah, what I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, um, I have been incredibly impressed by how many people have reacted to this. I see signs all over the place where people say, um, uh, if you're older, uh, I'll do your grocery shopping for you. Uh, what, what can we do um, to help each other out? I mean, it, it's, it's really nice. To, I know there's a lot of fear right now, and don't let physical distancing cause social isolation. Reach out and talk to your loved ones and so forth but just watching the way i've seen people react to this gives me a lot of hope and i i know we're going to get through this together and also i've been watching uh your videos bob at the pima county uh health department website being instructed so i would recommend that those of us uh watching our program that they access the pima county health department dr england has uh videos there every day right bob yeah, every morning. Every morning. Every so morning. they're instructive. So uh, I think that's going to be the end of the program. We've run out of time. It's 6.10. Dr. Ingle, I cannot thank you enough. For, I know you're very busy. And I cannot hey, thank you so enough me. for taking time to to help us in this discussion. I found it really instructive to hear from others uh, that we're doing the right thing and, and educate each other. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Thank you very much, Dr. Ingle. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, I think this is it for tonight, Mike. Thank you for everything. Thank you for you inviting. Do. Thank you for everything you do. 
Edgardo, Marcos, thank you very much. To our Nogales uh, colleagues and friends, families, thank you very much for keeping us safe. We all own this together. Uh, social distancing, cover your cough, hand washing. Remember, if, if you get the illness, you can transmit it to others. This is, this is really, really important. And if you don't do what you need to do, it's everyone's responsibility. It's not the healthcare providers. It's everyone. So with that, we'll finish. Thank you very much. And we'll see you the next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye.